you will always, always, always work to solve a quadratic, even if it's factorable. Okay, if your if your equation is factorable, then when you do the quadratic formula, there will be a lot of simplifying that you can do. Um, and then the quadratic formula works when factoring doesn't work. So uh, we're going to look at using it in all in, in three separate cases here. Your equation still must be equal to zero in order to solve using the quadratic formula. Okay, it still has to be equal to zero. So I wanted to remind you because we're going to be using a, b, and c. I wanted to remind you of the standard form of a quadratic. It is a x squared. So a is the coefficient of the x squared in the quadratic term. B is the coefficient of the linear term x, and C is a constant. If you don't remember the quadratic formula or you've never heard it before, here it is. It says that x is equal to negative b. Now, this number is not always going to be negative. What that means is you change the sign of b. If b was positive in your equation, it will be negative here in the quadratic formula. If b was negative in your quadratic, then it will be positive in the quadratic formula. Then we're adding and subtracting the square root of b squared. Be careful with this. If b is negative, you got to put it in parentheses. You're using your calculator for that part. Minus 4 times a times c, and that is all over 2 times a. Uh, now, there are tons of videos out there on YouTube with songs to help you remember the quadratic formula. I've heard instrumental from Billy Star, I've heard Pop is the Weasel. I am not in any way a singer, so I'm not going to teach you peanut culture. I've seen it myself, if you want to know one, look it up on YouTube. Uh, the way I learned it was we just had a competition to see who could say it the fastest. So we just we memorized it and said it over and over and over again. So, anyways, different things work for different people, so find what works for you. Okay. All right, let's look at number 21. So look at number 21. 9x squared plus 22 is equal to negative 4x minus 8 plus 11x squared. So obviously we've got lots of stuff to move on this one. I've got quadratics on both sides. It's bigger on the right side. So I'm actually going to subtract the 9x from both sides, which means I'm going to have to subtract the 22. So I have 0 on the left side this time. It doesn't matter which side 0. Just say one of them is 0. And I want to write this in standard form, so 11 minus 9 is 2x squared. I didn't change anything with my linear term, so it's minus 4x, and then negative 8 minus 22 is negative 30. Now, uh, this is an example of one that is factorable. We could go through, uh, we could take out a GCF, and then we could factor it, but I do want to show you how to do this using the quadratic formula uh, anyways. So, uh, it's probably not a bad idea, honestly, to go over here to the side after you have your equation in standard form and write down what A, B, and C are. A is positive 2, B is negative 4, C is negative 30. So, let's plug this into our quadratic formula. X is equal to negative B. Change the sign of B so it becomes positive 4. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, so put negative 4 in parentheses, minus 4 times a times c. You've got to be careful with those signs. Make sure you don't lose any negatives. All over 2 times a. Alright, now comes the simplifying time. We need to simplify what is under that square root. So what I do is I just type it all in the calculator. I say negative 4 squared. I mean, well, usually I try and do it by hand, but for right now, to save time, I'm going to put it in my calculator. Uh, negative 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 30, which gives us positive 256. You should always try and see if that is a perfect square. 256 is 16 squared. So that means we've got 4 plus or minus 16 over 4. So here's where our two solutions come from. We have 4 plus 16 over 4, and we have 4 minus 16 over 4. So we've got 20 over 4, which is 5, 
And we've got negative 12 over 4, which is negative 3. So that means technically I could go back to this step and show to myself, oh, this is uh, 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 3. If you really wanted to, to go back and talk about how that factors. Okay, but these are our two solutions, positive 5 and negative 3. If you end up with whole numbers or fractions that don't have square roots in them, that means your original quadratic was factorable. Okay, so I didn't really put too many of those on here to practice with because really factoring is quicker than the quadratic formula and you're probably going to make fewer mistakes, most likely. Um, but I just want to show you that the quadratic formula still works even if you can use factoring to solve. 22, on the other hand, we cannot factor. Okay, we cannot factor number 22. So let's look at that one. Uh, we've got quadratic terms on both sides, so we start by moving the 9p squared. 15 minus 9 is 6p squared minus 9p minus 23. 6 is not a GCF. You're not going to find anything that's going to make this one factorable. So let's go ahead and apply the quadratic formula. A is 6, B is negative 9, C is negative 23. So X equals, change the sign of B. It was negative, so it becomes positive 9, plus or minus the square root of negative 9 squared, minus 4 times A times C. You do need to memorize this because they do not give you the quadratic formula on the final exam. I will not give it to you on quizzes or tests. You need to memorize it. All over 2 times A. So let's crunch some numbers. Negative 9 in parentheses squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 23. 633. 633. Those check it, but it is not a perfect square. I just know that because I know what the answer is. <clears throat> Let's review simplifying radicals. Y'all ever done this before? Okay. I think yeah. We want to see if 633 is divisible by something that is a perfect square. So, I don't know, I'm just shot in the dark. I'm going to try 9. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, what about 4? Nope. 16? Nope. 25 is not going to work. 36? Nope. 49? Nope. 4, 7 squared, 8 squared. No. Do not think that this one is divisible. Double check. No. Okay. This one is not uh, divisible by a perfect square. Um, and I can kind of tell that I'm about done because when I start uh, getting to these bigger numbers, my numbers are getting smaller and smaller, so I know it's not going to work out. All right. Now, here is the biggest mistake that people make with these. They want to simplify so badly the 9 over 12. Yes, 9 and 12 are both divisible by 3. But because of that plus or minus on the top, you cannot simplify the 9 over 12 unless there was a factor of 3 in front of the square root. And there is not, so these are your two real solutions. I forgot to mark that on the last one, but that one's pretty obvious. Okay. Now, I know it only looks like one solution. But the plus or minus makes it 2, and they are real, they're just irrational um, because of that number under the square root. Okay, they are irrational because of that number under the square root. Now, mm, this might take a little bit of time, but let me show you the best way to check these answers if you want to check these answers. You can type in the answer. So we got 9 plus, you can only put 1 in at a time, the square root is 633. Close the parentheses on the square root, close the parentheses on the numerator. 
divided by 12. I don't know if anybody's ever showed you this before, but you can store values in your calculator. You press the button beside the 1. It says STO with an arrow, and a little arrow will show up on your screen. You can save this as any variable. Now, since we have keys in the problem, might as well save it as a piece. So you press alpha and 8. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to take that number. That's the decimal value of this answer, which if you graphed it and found the zeros, that's what you would get. Um, but that's stored as key, so then I can go in and I can type in my equation with the P's in it, and it's going to plug in that value for P. Okay, now obviously this is the real number. It's because this is equal to 9P squared, so I gotta make sure that I get the same number when I type it into 9P squared. So the right side equals the left side. That is the correct solution, or one of the correct solutions. Okay, how do we save it? So we type in the answer. Okay, that's what I did up here at the top. Um, I just typed it in. Make sure I put this closed around the radical and then around the numerator. This arrow is the button beside the number one. Okay, the STO with an arrow is the button beside the one. And then you can type in whatever variable you want to. I just used P because we had P in the problem. And you press enter and it'll give you the decimal value of your answer and then you can just type in the expression with the variable and it'll plug it in. Okay? So that's one way you can kind of check these or you know if you're trying to plug in answer choices that's tedious to have to type this in and square it and multiply it by 15. So this is just an easier way to do that. Okay? But as I mentioned you can also graph this and find the zeros and you'll get the decimal value of it. That's another way to check. Um, you can just type it in, get the decimal, graph it, find the zero, and make sure the decimal is not. Okay? Um, all right. Let's do one more. Let's do number 23 here. We've got 12x is equal to 11x plus 8 plus 4x squared. So, we have linear terms on both sides. My quadratic term is positive on the right side, so I'm going to move everything to the right side, and I'm going to write it in standard form. So the positive 4x squared comes to the front. 11 minus 12 is negative 1x, and the plus 8 goes on the end. So my a is 4, my b is negative 1, and my c is 8. So x equals, change the sign of my b, that becomes positive 1, plus or minus. Now you can't just leave it off because there's 1, you've got to put it there. The only time you can leave that off is if it's 0. Uh, negative b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. So we've got... 1 minus 16 times 8. I'm doing a little bit of it in my head here. The square root of negative 127, and that's all over 8. So, I think you all know that you can't take the square root of a negative number. But there's this little thing called i that lets us pull that out, that negative, out of the square root, and that is why we call it an imaginary solution, okay? That's why we call it an imaginary solution, because we can't take the square root of a negative number, but that little i is our solution to having a negative under the square root, so we just, anytime you get negative under the square root, you pull it out as i. Okay. Um, if we looked at this one on our calculator, 4x squared, if we graphed it, minus x plus 8, this is what happens. Uh, it does not cross the x-axis. It's way up here. We can barely even see any of it. We could adjust our window to see more of it. But it definitely doesn't cross the x-axis. So we know we don't have real solutions. We know we have imaginary solutions. And this is where it comes in pairs. 1 plus i square root of 1.7 over 8 and 1 minus i square root of 1.7 over 8. Um, you can check this as well. But you have to make sure that your calculator, you go to mode, 
and go almost all the way to the bottom. See where it says real? 